do do do. No, don't be dark. It's dark. Where's my light? Oh, there's light. Oh, hello. Yes. Hi. Um, it's me. Yes, it's Allison in the living room again. And um, what day is it? It's Saturday. It's Saturday. And we're very purple. We're very purple today. Hey, Bob just brought in a plate because we have several days that it is. Because it is Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. It is indeed August 29th. And August 29th, hi! August 29th is National Chop Suey Day. Apropos, because we are sitting here reading about, um, Prairie Lotus, which is about a young Chinese American girl in the wild, wild west in the 1880s in South Dakota. Um, and she's half Chinese and trying to make her way in America. And will indeed chop suey, a sort of Americanized Chinese, insanely popular and delicious dish. But chop suey is a subject of great debate, of course, because this is you know, chop suey is not really Chinese, but like most of what we eat at Chinese restaurants, chop suey, chow mein, etc. It's like, yeah, no. But, kind of, sort of. Because as look at chop suey, it's very old. It is Americanized. And there's much mythology about it. But it actually is based on a real Chinese thing. So, there you go. Um, as they call it, American Chinese cuisine. But it's hugely, hugely popular. And it's become part of Canadian Chinese cuisine. Filipino cuisine. Um, and it's usually like... Um, garlic chicken, snow peas, fried rice. They do it different ways, but usually it's a veggie thing. Now, it is believed, believed, because they don't know, believed to have been invented in the U.S. by Chinese Americans, but anthropologist Ian Anderson, scholar of Chinese food, says, oh, it can be traced to to sap sui, which means miscellaneous leftovers, which makes a whole lot of sense, actually. And that is common in the uh, in Toisan, a county in the Guangdong province, home of many early Chinese immigrants to the United States. Maybe, maybe I I don't know, but they said that's a possibility. Um, and they're saying yes, at the 1890s that, that that yes, there were talk there was talk of a dish that meant miscellaneous leftovers actually being in a province in China, and that that's how it got here. Um, and then it's like, oh, that it was created for um, the, the miners and for the railroad workers, uh, the Chinese were in the railroad. And that's probably where they first started making it here. And you hear lots of stories about how they just threw together whatever they had and the, the miners and the cowboys ate it. And they said, uh, chop suey, uh, don't know. But there is a dish that sounds remarkably like chop suey um, that indeed does exist in China. And what we're getting is the Americanized version. But it is super delicious, and it became really big in the 50s, because if you go to um, New Moon, it's a marvelous restaurant uh, in L.A., and they have very, you know, Americanized Chinese stuff, and they have some quasi-authentic Chinese stuff. But on one part of the menu, they said it's a, a 1950s New York Chinese cuisine, and they explained that their parents had a restaurant in New York. And they said this is what was really popular in Chinese restaurants in New York, and it's chop suey, chow mein, egg foo young, and they said, is it really Chinese? Eh, but this was all the rage, and so we make these traditional dishes based on the recipes of our parents and grandparents from a traditional American Chinese restaurant in New York, so there you go. So, indeed, so super duper authentic Chinese? Nah, it's what we make in America, but it is apparently based on a real Chinese dish. It's just it probably wasn't really pronounced exactly chop suey, and it probably didn't contain half the stuff that, you know. Yeah. But, you know, if you go to a sushi bar, they make sushi with um, avocado, which probably isn't really big in Tokyo. And they also make things like um, spicy tuna that involves, like, craft mayonnaise, which I'm sure is not a traditional Japanese staple. So there you go. Everything gets, and hopefully it works out deliciously. So, today is the 29th, which is International Day Against Nuclear Tests. That's also good. Um, it is according to Hoyle Day. Bob, what's according to Hoyle again? Hoyle wrote the book of uh, rules for card playing. The cards, that's it, according to Hoyle, when you're playing cards and poker. Well, according to Hoyle. So, it's the card playing guy. International Bat Nights. Last full weekend. Oh, we've been having International Bat Nights, apparently, for some time. And I did not know that. But... International Bacon Day is the last Saturday before Labor Day. 
And I don't, I don't have any chop suey. We're going to try to run out and get chop suey, but half the Chinese restaurants don't even make chop suey anymore. Um, that's what we couldn't find. But International Bacon Day. Now, you know, I'm not up on the red meat thing, but um, marvelous, marvelous turkey bacon. You know, you can get at Trader Joe's and whatnot. And it comes out, so usually tr turkey bacon, it doesn't come out crispy. It doesn't have the same. Look at that. That looks like regular old bacon bacon, oink oink bacon. But it's turkey bacon. And it's crunchy. Mmm. Oh, a little singe on the side, but it's good. Bacon! What's our commercial with the dog? Bacon, bacon, bacon. So, yes, I'm having bacon, a little turkey bacon. Oh, international. Mmm, bacon day. That's pretty good. Mmm, all the turkey bacon. That is good. Yummers. So, yeah. All right. Oh, my international thing. One of these days is going to have to be National Goldfish Day, right? Mmm. Mm-mm. So, what is poor Hannah? She's like, survived three whole days of school, I think, here. So, mmm, mmm, mmm. Bacon strips. Bacon, bacon, bacon. So, poor Hannah... I mean, she went through the first day of school with her bonnet on, so they couldn't see she was Chinese. It was like that bad. But the teacher, remember, teacher's on her side. Mr. Harris, the Justice of the Peace, head of the school board, totally on her side. And now Sam, the cute boy in school, totally on her side. And a couple of kids were actually officially rude and drew rude things on a slate and trashed her paper and put it in the water. But um, Sam just uh, beat up a kid in an alley for being mean to her. So it was like, don't do it again. So Hannah gonna go back to school so it's like day four <laughs> so far she's still in one piece and they just had one school board meeting and two incidents of medium bu bu level bullying um and she's still alive yay <laughs> hannah stepped slow as she neared the school schoolhouse she had to force her feet to continue up to the building and into the lean-to not until she took off her bonnet did she notice the quiet. She's still taking off her bonnet. It's good. She realized that... <clears throat> I'm going to cough up a piece of bacon here. Oh! Thank you. Somebody just said National Goldfish Day is February 19th. I'm so happy. Okay. She realized then that the schoolyard had been empty. No one was in the lean-to, and she knew before walking to the schoolroom she would see no students there. dun dun dun, dun. Miss Walters sat at her desk, writing in the ledger. As Hannah slid into her seat, she heard footsteps in the lean-to. Sam entered, her buddy, the cute boy, followed by Dolly, who we now know is totally vanilla and completely awful. Bess and Sadie, Bess's sister, they're nice. By the time Miss Walters rapped on her desk to begin the school day, no other students had arrived. Wow. So what? Like, first it was the three who wouldn't come because the parents were awful. Sam's still there, even though his dad is the most awful person in town. So now that Sam has told them you can't bully her because I'll actually beat you up in revenge, they don't want to play anymore. And wait, Dolly, Dolly hates her. Dolly's terrible, but she's going to go to school anyway just so she can be terrible to her. Nobody, no other students had arrived. Hannah stole a glance at Sam. He hunched over a book, but she could tell he wasn't reading it. He was staring at nothing, his usual cheery countenance replaced by a scowl, which made her stomach knot and foreboding. Good morning, students. Please take out your readers. Miss Walters apparently intended for school to progress as usual, despite the absence of most of the students. Hannah saw Bess and Dolly exchange quizzical looks. Oh, yeah, Miss Walters isn't having it. Miss Walters is like, I do not care. I am teaching school. Yes, she's half Chinese. We can all see her get over it. She is not having it. She's done. She's like, yes, don't care. She's already read the fifth reader. She's already the sixth reader. Love her. She's great. She has good handwriting. I'm done. And uh, she doesn't care. And if they don't want to come to school, they want to make a scene, she's like, eh, not my problem. Yeah. I like Miss Walters. Miss Walters is like, not my circus, not my monkeys. I don't care. Uh -uh. Oh, then a timid knock sounded the school door. Hannah turned and saw Pearl Baxter, Sam's little sister, standing in the doorway. Good morning, Miss Walter, she said in a voice barely above a whisper. Hannah sensed a slight movement across the aisle, looked over to see that Sam had slouched even lower in his seat. 
with his face all but hidden by a book. Only the top of his forehead was visible. Come in, Pearl, Miss Walter said. I, uh, no, Miss, Pearl said. She took a sideways step and clutched the door frame. I'm just, I've come to fetch Sam home. Miss Walters tilted her head a little and spoke gently. I hope there's nothing wrong. No, no, Miss. Ma said to tell you he's needed at home. Pearl looked as if she were about to cry. Sam, Ma said that if I come home without you, I'll get a whipping. Hannah clenched her jaw against the familiar twin feelings of anger and helplessness. Poor little girl, her own mother scaring her like that. Sam stood abruptly. It's all right, Pearl. It's not your fault. I'm coming now. He walked to the door, paused, and glanced back at the teacher. I'm sorry, miss. You're your old stand-up guy. I am. Miss Walters cleared her throat. Sam, please tell your parents, <clears throat> if it's not spring planting or fall harvest, the law requires children to attend school, so long as there's no illness or death in the family. Yes, miss, he shook his head and then mumbled. They know that. He took his sister's hand. She looked up at him, her lower lip trembling. He made a face, crossing his eyes and sticking out his tongue. To Hannah's relief, Pearl smiled. They left, closing the door quietly. Neither of them said goodbye. Hannah drew in a long breath, trying to relax her jaw. I thought their aim would be to stop me. I didn't think they'd stop their own children instead. Oh, they don't care. These people are going to sacrifice their, all their children's education and friendships and everything. And here, this apparently some woman just threatened to beat this tiny little child, little, little itty bitty girl there, Pearl, because her brother is nice to the Chinese girl. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Mm -mm. By being in class, she was preventing nearly all the other students from getting an education. I can't do that. I'll have to leave school. So they had succeeded, those townspeople who were against her. In the midst of her terrible disappointment, she also felt a moment of appreciation for Sam. I should think so. His parents were angry that Hannah was going to the school. They would have wanted him to stay home. He had disobeyed them and slipped out of his house. A brave thing to have done. Miss Walters was sitting with her fingers interlaced beneath her chin, looking very thoughtful. Then she raised her head and looked at Hannah, Bess, and Dolly at the back of the room. Fifth reader class, please rise and pass to the front. Her voice sounded perfectly normal. Hannah could only stare, frozen in surprise. Fifth reader class, Miss Walters said, a little more severely. As Hannah jumped to her feet, she saw Bess and Dolly stand, looking every bit as puzzled as Hannah felt. Girls, you're here to get an education, are you not? Yes, Miss, Hannah said. Yes, miss, Bess echoed, while Dolly nodded her eyes wide. And I've been hired to teach school. I will fulfill my duty by teaching any pupil in attendance. Her voice grew louder and her cheeks flushed pink as she spoke. She sounded almost angry. Hannah's gaze met the teacher's and held it for a moment. Miss Walters had just made her realize something important. <gasps> she has a choice. She could tell the school board not to let me attend. But she isn't doing that. The families of the other students, they could send their children to school or not. But they're free to choose. So am I. She raised her chin a little, and Miss Walters seemed to acknowledge her with the tiniest of nods. Then Miss Walters smiled and shrugged. But it does seem silly for you to have to sit in the back row. Why don't you come to the front desks? So the three of them moved their books to seats in the second row next to Sadie. Miss Walters opened her reader, and the school day began. Oh, yeah, Miss Walters is like, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. The morning was quite ordinary. The lessons proceeded as usual. No, better than usual. Sadie, small for her age and pale and shy, clearly relished having her big sister Bess seated next to her. Miss Walters was able to devote all her attention to just the two classes, Sadie in third reader and the big girls in fifth. The room was quieter, too, because a fewer students or no boys or both. <laughs> Hannah especially enjoyed the history hour, where she and Bess took turns re-answering the questions Miss Walters put to them. Dolly faltered after just one question and confessed that she did not know the lesson. At the noon hour, Bess and Sadie went home for their dinner. 
Dolly's family lived on a claim too far out of town for her to go home, but she never stayed in the schoolhouse. Instead, she always walked through town, stopping to look in the shops. Miller. Would you like to walk with me? Dolly asked. Oh, wait, she's totally the Nelly, and she's inviting her to, like, go shopping at lunch. Shocking. She was looking at Hannah, who was so astonished that she almost glanced over her shoulder to see who Dolly might be addressing. But, of course, no one else was there. I, I was going to go over the spelling lesson, Hannah replied. I've heard you spell, Dolly said with a friendly smile. You're the best in class. You and Bess. You don't need to go over it. Come for a walk instead. The unexpected invitation left Hannah flustered. Maybe I, I don't know. I'd rather not go into town. Well, that's all right then. We'll just take a turn around the schoolyard, and then you can walk me as far as Main Street. The yard was nothing but bare prairie, with a well in the middle and the privy in one corner. It actually wasn't a yard at all, just the space between the school building and the street corner. The town most likely had plans for a, a path and plantings and maybe even trees next year, but for now, the schoolyard, like La Forge itself, was raw and unfinished. Hannah and Dolly strolled around the edge of the lot. It's so strange, isn't it, Dolly said with a giggle, just the four of us all morning. So your parents don't mind that you're in school with me? Oh, they don't know. They only come to town once or twice a month, so they haven't heard anything about you yet, and I haven't told them. Hannah considered this. Well, what do you think they'll say when they find out? Why, they'll make me stop coming, of course, Dolly replied. Hannah said nothing. It was clear that Dolly had no notion that what she just said was hurtful. Hannah was annoyed at herself for not anticipating the answer and the hurt. Oh, yeah, but Dolly's just kind of whoosh, oblivious. She's like, oh, well... Yeah, no, I won't be allowed to go to school with you. <laughs> but I just don't even tell them. Dolly's a strange one. An odd duck here. Mmm, crispy bacon. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Terrible. But Dolly conflicted because she's come right out and admitted that, yes, her family didn't approve of her going to school. But she could have told them. She didn't tell them. She didn't tell them. I'm thinking. Dolly put her arm through Hannah's, which started her so much she instinctively pulled away. Oh, now, Dolly said, I won't bite, I promise. She giggled again. She's not very mm, reliable. All this time, she's been turning up her nose at me, and she chooses today to start being friendly? Mm, not a coincidence because most of the other students aren't here to see it. I'm thinking she's up to something. You think she's up to something? Yeah, I think she's up to something. I'm thinking that Dolly might just be all about, like, being the center of attention. And maybe she's thinking, if I take the new girl, the Chinese girl, into town, it'll cause a scene. I think she's looking to cause a scene. Like, she's going to take her into town and be nice to her just to watch people go crazy. Totally, she would do that. I'm thinking. Mm. Mm hmm. Hannah took a little breath and relaxed her arm. Not letting down her guard, she still felt wary about Dolly, but it was nice walking with a girl her age, even one she had to pretend to like. <laughs> I, I never knew anybody Chinese before, Dolly said as they reached the far side of the yard. It's kind of exciting. I guess you wouldn't, Hannah said quietly. Uh, <clears throat> Dakota Territory isn't far enough west. There's lots of Chinese and other Asians, too, if you go further west. <coughs> or further east. Um, my goodness, this is far enough west for me, Dolly exclaimed. I'd love to go back east, where there are lots of real stores and amusing things to do. It's so dull out here. It's never anything to do but work. Of course, if Dolly actually went back to New York City, there'd, there'd be plenty of Chinese. If she went to L.A. or San Francisco. Then. Yeah, so it was good. It's a trap. Yes, it's a trap. I'm sure it's a trap. But I think it is. I don't think Hannah, um, Dolly, Dolly wants to hurt Hannah. I think she is oblivious. I think that she only is thinking about it. So I think she's looking to cause excitement. She's bored. She's just said she is bored. And I think I would not put it past her 
to take her arm and walk arm in arm with her in the town. Tough. Not to necessarily yell, you know, get Hannah beat up, but to just watch people gasp and turn their heads. Not even thinking that it might be dangerous, you know. She pouted for a moment, but quickly regained her cheerful mood. Listen, I want to ask you something. I'm sure you won't mind, seeing as you already understand about there being no Chinese here. It, you don't mind, do you? I won't know until you ask, Hannah said. Dolly shrieked with laughter. Well, of course you wouldn't. That's silly of me. Sometimes I just don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. <laughs> Dolly's. Uh. <clears throat> then she pulled a little closer to Hannah. Oh, yeah, you're going to love this one. So rude. Your eyes, she said. They're, they're shaped so different. Is it hard for you to see? Hannah hadn't realized she'd been holding her breath until that moment. She let it out slowly, a tiny bit at a time, which wasn't easy when what she really wanted to do was heave a tremendous sigh, a sigh of weariness. Yeah, Dolly's just like super nice. But, I mean, at least she's going with the I've never met anyone Chinese before and can I ask you this? It's almost bordering on attempting to be polite. So is she just dumb? I mean, it, it, it could be that. So is she being rude or is she just like really like the no? And, you know, there's people who don't know. Well, I got numb. But, like, can you see? <laughs> really? And she says, "What? no filter. Dolly is no filter. Mm -mm. Sometimes it seemed to her that white people were obsessed with her eyes. She couldn't begin to count the number of times something like this had happened. Children pulling at the corner of their own eyes to mock her. Children, even adults, calling out, slitty eyes. Hey, slitty eyes. Chinaman eyes. What's wrong with people? Then there were those like Dolly, perhaps not meaning to be unkind, but still unthinking. Cruelty was painful. Thoughtlessness was merely exhausting. Dolly apparently took Hannah, Hannah's silence for shyness. Oh, it's all right, you can tell me, she said. I wouldn't go bearing tales if it's something you don't want anyone else to know. She gave Hannah a reassuring pat on the arm. Oh, there, there. It's okay. Poor Hannah. If she thought it would help her to get in with the other girls, she'd tell them quicker than I could snap my fingers. Well, you said yourself, <clears throat> I'm good at spelling. Dolly frowned, clearly puzzled by the change of topic. I, I did, but to get good at spelling, I study the speller. Yes, of course, but I still do. Oh. <laughs> Dolly was quiet for a moment, then turned to stare hard at Hannah. Hannah kept her face still. She knew that Dolly was examining her expression, trying to determine what she said was in any way spiteful. Oh, so that means, Dolly spoke slowly, that you can see perfectly well. You can see all the words in the speller. Okay, so Dolly's just an idiot. Okay, good. Ah, her mood shifted again with another giggle. Well, you have to admit it's a natural question. Your eyes being shaped like that, smaller and all. <laughs> Hannah could almost hear her patience fraying. Actually, it's not really logical when you think about it. Ned has big eyes, right? B bigger than Albert's. But no one would ask Albert if he sees worse than Ned. Dolly blinked in obvious confusion. Then, yes, Ned's eyes are nice, aren't they? Don't you think he's the handsomest of the boys? But I think Sam would be the most fun to step out with. And with that, she was off, babbling about the boys. Hannah allowed herself a moment of grim satisfaction. She had managed to say what she wanted to say. They walked on toward Main Street. As they neared the corner, Hannah slowed her steps and broke into Dolly's monologue. I think I'll go back now, she said. Don't you want to look in the shops with me? Sometimes there are new things after the freight train comes through. Hannah shook her head. No, no, thank you. As she turned away, a wagon careened around the corner so fast and wildly both girls had to leap out of the way. It rattled and banged, but stopped just beyond them. The man who jumped down from the seat had a red face and a grizzled beard beneath a worn straw hat. He glared at Dolly. Get in, he said, his words terse with fury. Uh-oh. Somebody done went out to the claim and told them. She's like, I didn't tell them. They don't know. They never come into town. Yeah. Oopsies. Dolly glanced at Hannah and shrugged, but Hannah saw a look of alarm in her eyes. The man reached out, grabbed Dolly by the arm, and practically dragged her to the wagon. Pa, you're 
hurting me? Dolly cried out. You think that hurts, he shouted. Wait until I get you home. You're lucky I didn't find you on Main Street. You could have disgraced us in front of the whole town. Hannah stood paralyzed. He thinks being seen with me is a disgrace. She wished she could disappear, simply vanish like a puff of smoke. She tried to think of Mama. What would she do? What would she say? But humiliation had emptied her mind. As Dolly's father started up the horses, he leaned over the side of the wagon seat and spat. Not at Hannah, but unmistakably toward her. She saw the blob of spit hit the ground. Phew. She could not turn her head away, so she closed her eyes tightly. For a long moment, she was terrified that her legs would buckle. She stiffened her knees and pressed them together so hard her bones hurt. Too much. She thought she was getting through the days as she needed to, but today had been too much. First, all those families keeping their children out of school, then Dolly's brainless question about her eyes, and now this vicious contempt. She forced her eyes open, unlocked her knees, and began moving. When she needed, to, when she reached the schoolhouse, she did not remember walking there. Once in her seat, she heard Miss Walters ask, Hannah, do you know where Dolly is? Her, her father, I mean, Mr. Mr. Svensson, fetched her home, miss, she said. She was astonished by her own voice. It was as if someone else had spoken, as she herself had shrunk to the size of a dried pea and another person had taken over her body, moving, speaking calmly. The afternoon passed in a blur. When she was finally back at the house, she hurried up the stairs to her half of the attic and threw herself down on the bed. She had thought she was going to burst into tears and was surprised when her eyes remained dry. She pulled the sheet over her head and curled up on her side. She didn't move until her breathing was no longer ragged. And then Mama came to her. You remember what I said about when you feel sad, miss me too much, feel angry. Yes, Mama. No, Mama. She did remember. But at that moment, she didn't want to. You stop thinking about yourself. That's where the sadness is inside you. You look outside instead at other people. You do things for other people. It fills you with good feelings. Less room for the bad ones. Hannah turned onto her back and mouthed the words into the sheet over her face. Mama, I can't. I'm too tired. Always, it starts with one thing. One small thing. She groaned, threw off the sheet, and sat up. One thing, that's all. Then I'm coming back to bed. Startled, she realized she'd spoken out loud. She went around the board partition and picked up Papa's boots, his best pair, the ones he wore to church, to go calling. Downstairs in the kitchen, she donned her apron. She put a small lump of beeswax into a pan on the show stove. While the wax melted, she lit the lamp and held the plate above the flame. The plate was chipped and cracked, unsuitable for the table. It was now used for collecting lamp black. She added castor oil to the melted wax and took everything into the lean-to, which she knelt on the floor. Ooh, shiny, boot shiny, cool. Sh shining shoes. Yes, if you're mad in a terrible mood, shine some shoes. That'll get it all out of your system. And she's having to make her own shoe, po shoe polish with beeswax, castor oil, and lamp black. It can barely soot, just heating up the plate of the lamp. I'll do it. After dipping a rag into the pan, she smeared it with lamp black and began rubbing the boot. Polishing boots and shoes was one of her least favorite tasks. The combination of wax, oil, and lamp black made a mess. But at least the results were satisfying. The boots always looked much nicer when she was finished, almost like new. She didn't end up going back to bed after all. Instead, she took out and unfolded the brown paper she used for sketching and began to draw. None of her dress sketches were drawings of specific people. An oval for a head, a few quick pencil strokes for her hair, or no facial features. This time, though, she drew a dress on a slim, willowy body. Dolly's. She included every detail she thought Dolly would want. The very latest style from back east. A polonaise, a long jacket-like bodice that flowed into an overskirt over open at the front with an underskirt of tier after tier of lace, ruffles at the neckline, a large satin bow on the bustle. Oh yeah, this is totally the Nellie Olsen prototype. Yeah, yeah, that much lace, ruffles, bows. 
It was a strange kind of revenge. She was drawing Dolly a dress that she would covet hungrily and never be able to own. That's kind of mean. I like it, but it is. But that's the thing. I mean, Dolly has nice dresses, but yeah, they're all seconding. As she mixed up biscuit for supper, Hannah considered whether to tell Papa about what had happened with Dolly and her father. Papa had seen such mockery and heard the insults plenty of times, aimed at Mama. Shortly before she died, Mama had spoken to Hannah a few times about being bullied and mocked. Hannah sensed that Mama was bringing up the subject as she knew she wouldn't be around much longer, and she thought... The thought had made Hannah too sad to heed Mama as she should have. But she had a vague memory of what Mama had told her. Mama and Papa had been out for a walk in Los Angeles a few weeks after their marriage. A man had mocked and insulted Mama, which made Papa so angry he had throttled the man half to death. Mama had been terrified that Papa would be arrested and charged with assault. So Hannah had perceived that whenever possible, she needed to shield Papa from knowing about such episodes. But it was complicated. Your Papa, he's a good man, a good heart, Mama said. Most white men, they think that Chinese women are only for, <clears throat> for fun. They would never marry a Chinese woman. Papa loved Hannah and Mama, but at the same time, it was hard on him knowing what but that most white folks disapproved of them, and it was never easy for anyone, including Papa, to get rid of attitudes they had grown up with. I know, this poor guy, this is, you know, back in 1890, 1880s, he married her mother, and yeah, they were in California, but whoa, I mean, it was illegal. I guess California maybe wasn't a state yet, they got away with it. It would have been illegal in every, everywhere else in the country. And, and people absolutely just would have been awful, and he really loved this woman, and so like, yikes, it had to be brutal. From those conversations, Hannah understood that it was better to simply avoid the subject around Papa. Getting her into school had been a big enough hump. He didn't need other reminders of the trouble that occurred because she was half Chinese. He might well have heard that most families were keeping their children home from school, but he hadn't said anything about it to her. Oh yeah, the poor guy, so he gets so angry. That's the thing, he wants it to go to school, really. He wants it to be okay. But he doesn't want to start, you know, any confrontation or trouble, not because he thinks they're right, or he wants her discriminated against or thinks she should stay home. Because he'll get so mad, he will go medieval on their ass. He will he will attack someone. He will beat someone senseless as well. He knows he'll get so mad, he'll take out the whole town. He'll go Charles Bronson. So that's why he's like, no, I can't go there. So poor Paul. <laughs> Hannah rolled out that biscuit dough. A sudden pain seared through her like a blow to her stomach. She knew exactly what it was. It had happened before and would doubtless happen again. It was a piece of her heart breaking from missing Mama. To Mama, the fact that Hannah was half Chinese had been the most beautiful thing in the world. Ooh. All right, so tomorrow we'll be on chapter 13 and it looks like, yes, school, school, there will be more school. It looks like there's going to be more school. All right, um, she's still alive, but she's still going to go back to school. So tomorrow will be Sunday. We'll do this. Poor girl. Yes, Chuck Norris. Pa, pa needs to get Chuck Norris on these people. It's just like they're so awful. But she's trying to be good. She's trying to, like, keep a low profile. But they're, they're not really letting her. She's trying to keep a low profile just do everything right and be really chill. And they're just like, ugh. Um, I think Sam's going to come back. I don't think Sam's going to stay away that long. And poor Dolly. Dolly was kind of dumb, but she was being nice. And then her dad put a stop to that. Dolly was almost going to cross over and, like, learn something and start being cool for, like, a minute. I don't know. Well, we will read again tomorrow, tomorrow at 1.30. And, um, what's tomorrow? This guess, Is there a special <laughs> run out to the store? Mmm. 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 Uh, okay. We'll check that out. And then, um, <clears throat> chop suey. I'm going to do a cheese thing tonight. Oh, ah, oh, I have that. Ooh, tomorrow will be good. Um, so there you are. Tomorrow will be um, Sunday, 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 and we'll read again. And, um, yeah, look at that. She's putting it right up on there. Thursday, September 24th. They think it gets to be right here or right here on the side of the wall. And stuff is happening. So I'm doing my show, and um, I'm doing things, and um, I'm making a movie. I'm going to make a movie. It's like, ah! 
I am going to make a movie. We're we're super. It's all like super duper safety protocol. Da 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 da. It's the, gonna be. It's the new way. It's the new. It's the way making movie making of the future. And you know, stand over there. Um, but we're gonna make a movie and we're gonna do it like super duper safe. It's gonna be fascinating because we're gonna be like doing all the new things that we have to do to make a movie. Um, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. And you're gonna like it because. Okay, I'm playing someone awful. Like, she's so awful. I'm playing a character who is not particular. She's really not nice. She's terrible. She's so terrible. And I'm going to enjoy it. So, I will see you tomorrow, everybody. Um, wash your hands. Wear your mask. Be careful. Call your friends. And I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>